can you find two integers x and y such that x cube plus y cube is 10,000? We will work with this problem today. But first, let me give you the plan. The plan is we will talk about the concept. So, this is not just a solution video. We will learn something that we can use in other problems. Then I'll give you a hint so that you can try the problem on your own. Finally, we will discuss the solution. This problem is useful for Mathematics Olympiad. It's also useful for ISI and CMI entrances. Hello everyone. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. It's a number theory concept video for Math Olympiad and ISI and CMI entrances. My name is Ashwini Dash Gupta. I'm a founder and faculty at Chinta. Let's dive right into the concept. Whenever you see cubes, think about the number 7. Well, at least one of the things that you can think about is the number 7. And I'll show you why. If you divide a number n by 7, can you tell me what are the possible remainders? If you divide any integer by 7, there are actually 7 possible remainders. Can you tell me what they, those are? Like 4 is one such remainder, 2 is another one. Could you guess what are the other ones? Okay, so I think you're guessing it right 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Can you give me examples of numbers of each of those kinds in the comment? Okay, now let's see what happens if we divide n cubed by 7. Earlier we found what happens when we divide n by 7. Now we want to talk about n cube. We want to find the possible remainders. So a quick reminder, if I divide a number by 7, the remainders are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When I cube it, my claim is that the remainders are 0, 1, 1, 6, 1, 6, 6. So there is a very beautiful calculation that will lead to this particular conclusion. But first, I want you to observe that when you divide a cube by 7, there are only three types of remainders that you can get, 0, 1, or 6. That reduces the number of possibilities greatly. So we will be using that fact in our problem. A little bit about Chinta.com. Chinta is working since 2010 with outstanding students of Math Olympiad, ISI, CMI entrances from all around the world. The Chinta programs are taught by Olympians and researchers. You can go to Chinta.com and find out more about the faculty team. Also, we have a free toolbox where we put open content for Math Olympiad, ISI, CMI entrances, and college mathematics. The link is in the description. You can use that to join the portal. Now, let's get back to the problem. I want to give you one example calculation. We found that if we divide cubes by 7, the possible remainders are 0, 1, and 6. I want to show you how we did that calculation. So if n divided by 7 gives remainder 3, that was one of the cases. Then we can write n as 7 times some quotient plus 3, which is the remainder. Now we will focus on this case only. So we can write n as 7 times some q plus the number 3, which is the remainder. So let's cube both sides. If we do that, 
and you can do it in your notebook this will be the rough calculation n cube will be 343 q cube plus 441 q square plus 189 q plus 27 now we can write n cube as 7 times something plus 6. So the something involves q, it's 49q cube plus 147q square plus 27q plus 3. This is the quotient and 6 is the remainder. So that's how we know that the n cube gives remainder 6 when n gives remainder 3. So you can do a similar calculation for each of the other cases. And if you know modular arithmetic, that's great. Then you can easily find the desired result that n cube gives remainder 0, 1 or 6, no matter what n is. Okay, so we are ready to talk about hint. We are done with the concept. The hint is, can you think about the remainder when x cube plus y cube is divided by 7? That is the sum of two cubes are di is divided by 7. What happens then? What are the possible remainders? Why don't you pause the video here and give that a try? A big shout out to all of you who are subscribing and sharing our videos. Please subscribe and share. It motivates us a lot and then we can make more videos like this and interact with you with some beautiful mathematics. So let's carry on with the hint. Each cube gives remainder 0, 1 or 6. We want sum of two cubes so we can make all possible combinations. Let's try that. So we want to make sum of the remainders of two cubes when divided by 7. So it could be 0 plus 0 or 0 plus 1 or 0 plus 6 or it could be 1 plus 0 plus or 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 6 or it could be 6 plus 0 or 6 plus 1 or 6 plus 6. Remember each of the cube gives out remainder 0, 1 or 6 so we are making all possible combinations. If we add them up we get 0, 1 or 6 in the first row. 1, 2 or 7 in the second row. Now, remainder, sum of remainder 7 means you can divide that by 7 again and get remainder 0. Similarly, in the third row, we have 6, 7 or 12 as remainders. So, again, sum of remainder 7 means you can divide that by 7 again to get remainder 0. Sum of remainders 12 means you can divide that by 7 again and get remainder 5. So what are the possible remainders when sum of two cubes is divided by 7? Well, it could be 0, 1, 6, 1, 2, 7, 6, 7, 12. That was the sum of the things that we got in the previous minute. So the possible remainders when two, sum of two cubes is divided by 7 is 0, 1, 2, 5 or 6. We have done all the case bashing and we found this beautiful conclusion we will use this one okay but first let's focus on 10000 when 10000 is divided by 7 you can easily calculate this the remainder is 4 so can you do the last step we found that the sum of two cubes gives remainder 0 1, 2, 5, or 6. And we also found that 10,000 gives remainder 4 when divided by 7. So, is it possible that sum of 2 cubes is equal to 10,000? This is one last line. Put your comment in the description and tell me what you think. You should be able to finish it up from here. Check the link in the description and please share and subscribe if you like our videos. We will keep on making great mathematical videos in the future as well.
Thank you.